Hello everyone, this is the Oba Femis and we are so happy for this moment. Firstly, I want to thank God for this moment of reading and for giving us the opportunity to develop our ability to reflect in our aspect of our life in Christ. That is, to reflect in what really comes from Him. I also want to express our joy and honor in being able to summarize this book together with my entire family. In addition to the book being written by a person we greatly admire, our dear Pastor Ola, who is a father who inspires and guides us in different areas of our lives, I say, thank you, sir. May God continue to use you as a divine instrument among us, and may your work and mission grow more and more in Jesus' name. It was a profound family moment as we delved through so much important information to be immediately transferred into our lives. We are grateful for the brilliant and powerful words of our pastor Ola based on the word of God. So we were able to learn from practical experiences shared in the book based on the word of God and transformed into an incredible guide, especially nowadays when we are surrounded by so many incentives all the time and the power of choice and decision surrounds us at every moment. I also want to thank all the Mars and Sars who will be sharing and exchanging ideas with us about this valuable read. God help us and guide us in the wonderful name of Jesus. Amen. Hi, this is Chemi and I'm now talking about a little introduction. Before entering the first chapter, we begin with a reflection on the introduction and the main subject that the book tries to help and guide us. Not every open door is opened by God. It seems like a simple phrase to say, but if we think about it in a practice, it's something that requires a lot of care. Saying that we must be very careful also seems easy because we must identify what type of care makes us access this point of identifying what really comes from God and also discovering how to follow this path. Also, how can we identify the opposite? How to identify the disguise traps that come every moment in our lives, disguised as people and opportunities. This book connects us in a deep reflection on all of this that if we are connected with the Word of God along with all these guidelines, this book will certainly not be just a reading, but a compass to guide us. The question this book seeks to answer, how do you know if an opportunity really comes from God? Hi, this is Ife, and I'm going to be doing an overview of the first three chapters. The Dilemma of Multiple Opportunities I think this is the real dilemma in everyone's lives. Many opportunities coming from so many places, from so many people. How can we organize ourselves, focus, decide, and believe that this decision comes from God? We know that not all opportunities are meant for us. We need tools from God to avoid falling into traps and change the course of our lives, because we are unaware. The enemy is disguised through smiles, beauty, good conversations, and you can be sure that the enemy always disguises himself in a very clever way. And if we are not deeply connected to the word of God, we run the risk of falling into the hole of the trap prepared by the enemy. It can be scary or maybe funny to think that all of our own decisions made us where we are right now, and that based on them, we wouldn't be where we are today. So we can ask ourselves, Were my choices right? Would I be somewhere better than I am today? Or am I grateful for being where I am because I was able to identify the doors in front of me and choose the one that came from God? But also, regardless of where we are, God is always ready to give us a hand to put us back on the right path. We follow our path and keep in mind that not all opportunities that present themselves along this path are destined for you, for me, or for us. It gives us a great concern that only the peace of Jesus in our hearts can reassure and calm so many anxieties and worries at each stage of choice. And then I see the hand of God caressing our hearts and whispering to us saying, Hey, I'm here. Just follow what I taught and be attentive to my word. 
This chapter gives us a real warning not to enter an open door just because it is open, and that Christ is the one who guides us in each step, and that the chosen door is the door to follow God's plan. That we can look behind this door and feel the peace of Jesus calling us. May we look behind this door and see the colors of God's love decorating the hidden landscape behind this door. May we feel the kindness of God in giving us His hand and feel Him holding the hand tight like children learning to walk, directing us to the correct way. This chapter makes me feel like someone who sees many doors in front of me and invites me to look at each one of them, but I will only manage to be able to see something beyond hearing or feeling if I receive all the tools that God is making available to me. Each person will feel and face this power of choice in their own way, and I don't believe that any of them should be stressful, because nothing that comes from God should bring us any distress. And also, something that marked me is that sometimes God puts these different situations to test our faith, which we are not always attentive to identify. Biblical principles properly connected to us will sharpen our sensitivity to all of this. And when you look at all these opportunities, just remember, God always has the perfect plan for us. Chapter 2 First Principle The Limits of the Scriptures an opportunity from God will not contradict the scriptures. After what we have already talked about and reflected on the first chapter about different aspects, this other chapter comes with more tips. Based on the idea that we have decisions to make and that we must deeply immerse in the word of God, we understand that if we deeply aware of and connected to this, we will be able to point out whether our decision is compatible with the scriptures or not. We can think about how to correct a test with an answer sheet. I think again about those doors that I mentioned before, and when I look at one of those doors, I see a long path full of different situations. So I think about each of my desires, each thought, each emotion, each attitude, and so I check whether each one of them is compatible with that scripture to teach me. So I will be able to identify if that path is promising for me now and in the future and are compatible with the scriptures. If I know that the decision I must make needs to come from God, then everything that involves this path needs to be supported by the word of God. I need to sometimes ignore my sinful and ignorant feelings and thoughts and clinch to the word of God with all my strength. God certainly already has the right plan, and if I follow what he taught us, I won't touch the wrong door handle, because God knows us completely and has prepared everything for us. This is an exercise of faith in which we must fully trust in God, and even if what he wants goes against what our logic shows, it is his plan that we must opt for it, and in the scriptures we seek the answer to this puzzle. This chapter reminds us of the importance of being increasingly devoted and passionate about the scriptures because they are the ones that must be the ground of our path. Our chosen path must have been built on top of the word of God. Like a building, if it's the base down there, it's not strong enough. If the engineering is not calculated correctly, the building runs, runs the risk of collapsing. So our structure and decisions must be based on the Bible. I like the way the pastor carefully welcomes people who have difficulty maintaining a close relationship with reading the Bible, accepting the difficulties that we all have at some point. So he shows us practical tips to intertwine our relationship with biblical reading. This chapter warns us a lot about something very important, that if we let ourselves be guided only by our hearts and ignore the word of God, we will definitely be on the wrong path because it is not from God, but based on our earthly feelings. This reminded me of a situation that I'm living in right now, and I can use as an example a decision about a volunteer job that I need to decide which one I'm going to do. I have several options and different areas to do. In trying to talk to my parents, my mother, she gave me already an answer. She always tells me, if you pray, pray, you will find the answer, trust me. Because one of the opportunities I had was to do volunteer days at the primary school I attended. And I have a love for that place and all the teachers and staff. 
But on the other hand, I could use this opportunity to boost my skills in the area that I want to pursue in my future, such as an opportunity in the engineering area. A difficult decision and one that I definitely need to think about at each step and reflect on how this could have an impact in my future and how this could impact my life and the lives of the people around me. So I'm going to make my checklist and in every detail I'm going to consult the template that is present in the scriptures. But certainly for me to meditate deeply, I will lend a hand for prayer so that it can be my means of transportation to guide me and that it can reassure me and bring the peace of Jesus in my heart to make this path way smoother. Don't take our compass out of your pocket, which figuratively represent the point that points us in the right decision that instructs us on the path to follow, and thus we will be protected and protected even more from ourselves at times. Chapter 3. Jesus' Lookalike Then we arrived at the third chapter, which brings us a great and important reflection. In fact, one more for us Christians. So that, so that we continue in our choices, how we can polish ourselves to become more and more similar to what Jesus shows us and taught us. God is, expects this from us, so that we can serve adequately in our path, and this only happens through the wisdom that only God's... Chapter 3. Jesus' Lookalike Then we arrived at the third chapter, which brings us a great and important reflection. In fact, one more for us as Christians, so that we can continue in our choices, how we can polish ourselves to become more and more similar to what Jesus showed us and taught us. God expects this from us, so that we can serve as adequately in our path, and this only happens through the wisdom that only God gives through Christ. Because the wisdom we use to polish ourselves and make our decision needs to come from God, and everything that comes from God carries purity, peace, and everything good that God expects from us as Christians according to His Word and according to everything that Jesus showed us. So, transferring these reflections to how to link this when making our decisions, we must reflect on whether this decision is bringing us an opportunity to become more more like Jesus, or is it distancing us from that? As believers, it is our duty to become more and more like Jesus. So, we must carry everything that this book brings us here and observe ourselves. Every moment of our life is up to us to decide whether our choice is similar to the example that Jesus showed us. This book invites us to exercise our eyes because we have only decisions at every moment around us to act and resemble Jesus. We just need to open our eyes and be willing to look. The book reminds us that the wisdom from above and everything that comes from God is always pure, full of peace, caring and teachable, and that these values are present and define the direction we will decide to take and how we will act. There is a phrase that I really like and it's always present in my life and on my families. The world is saved every day by small gestures. This phrase reminds us that nothing is small for God as long as it is based on His Word and on the attempt to become more like Jesus. So don't be dazzled by believing that to resemble Jesus, we must act with greatness and shine in the eyes of others. God knows our heart and our intentions in every gesture, so even if we secretly, we must act always remembering that the objective is to become each more and more like Jesus. Now speaking from my point of view about my experience with the book as a teenager who is in a generation constantly encouraged to experience different situations, a generation in which everything happens so quickly without us often remembering to reflect on each step and how this can impact our future, every word in this book felt like a bomb for me and I will turn it all into compass held within me. I deeply believe that I will never look at my decision-making power the way I used to, and I thank God for making this possible. God is good all the time. To think that the power is in our hands to understand that this 
just like us, many around us moving towards the full realization of God's plan for their lives because they are repeatedly embracing God's sent opportunities. And at the same time, many all around us will have their destinies deviated from God's plan by making decisions that accepting opportunities that are not sent by God reinforces our commitment as Christians. Dive deeply into these tips, life experiences based on the Word of God, and polish your life trusting. We continue to pray that God would bless us and that we will be able to interpret this in our own path. May we be attentive at every moment of decision, whether this opportunity comes or is it a trap. I hope that like me, you are able to draw this model of the doors that you need to choose and that you are strongly armed with God's tools to spy on each of these doors and visualize the path behind each of them. And finally, present all of this, we reflect in our reading of God's most precious gift to us, our freedom of choice. God would not lead you to an opportunity that contradicts what he clearly says in his word. God will not open a door that requires personal commitment or disobedience for you to enter, so that we can use our freedom aligned with all of this and live a full life in Christ. Is this opportunity from God? Remember, God will not lead you to an opportunity that clearly contradicts what He has revealed in His Word. And that in each decision, you seek a path that makes you more and more like Jesus. We thank God for this opportunity. Thank you to everyone on the church team who has made this moment possible for us. Thank you, Pastor Allah.